Hello everyone, my name is Holly from Idaho here in the United States and during this hour we are going to talk about dating and dating rituals and things like that in different countries and the way things have changed um, in the last 30 years or so. Um, hello Mikkel, how are you today? Hello Holly, I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning to you. That's a real day. Good morning. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, <clears throat> did you sleep well last night? Yes, yes, yes. You know that. Uh, always. And any problem to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Excellent. And hello, Matthew. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. Now, are you the Matthew that's from Chicago? That lives no, in Chicago? No, the one from Russia. From Russia, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's. I probably asked you that last time as well. So, did you sleep well last night? Well, sure, I slept well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about yeah. you? Well, I probably did, but it was so long ago. <laughs> so it's ten. It's ten p.m. here, and it's uh, and it's morning for you guys. So. So where are you I from? Want, I'm from Idaho in the U.S. Idaho. Oh, okay, that's yeah. like. Uh, 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 so countryside uh, type of uh, type of like of uh, location, State? yeah. Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. Um, we Idaho is made up of seventy five percent of the state is made up of national forest. Okay. So so yeah, the largest city is uh, has about I think three hundred thousand people. The metropolitan area has about five hundred thousand people. And so, compared to many areas of the world, we are very rural. <laughs> so, the town I live in right now is 900 people, and the town I used to live in is eight, had 850. <laughs> so, so I've moved up. And what so. can you tell uh, a specific thing that uh, um, you can see in your like location? Like, what is something like common only for that location? What I mean is something like people uh, relation between people, or how they speak, maybe, or how they do something. Um, well, there's something uh, weird. So, well, as far as speaking, <laughs> something that is very common for people who were raised in this part of the world, we I, we actually pronounce male M A I L. Uh huh. We pronounce it like this, Mel. 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 Yeah. That's did you weird. did you check your email? Uh, did you have you gone to go check the mail today? But as uh, far as I hear, you are pronouncing words like uh, like an average uh, United mm -hmm. States. Uh, yeah, person. that's I, I, yeah, and I do. That's the only word that I know of that um, that Idahoans do not pronounce right. It's the words with a i l, pale pale. A nail, stuff like that, and I've had to learn it. But other, other than that, uh, we we actually speak just like the rest, just like the Midwest. So, the regular English. Um, see what else? What am, you you sound like uh, uh, for me like um, like every other uh, United American. States. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's because I am a, I am a regular American. <laughs> yeah, but you know there are like people that you can hear, listen, and you kind of think you are thinking, what? Why are they speaking like that? Like something uh, weird, you know? You but, you would you would never think that about an Idahoan. Someone okay. if, somebody from Idaho um, is uh, you 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 pretty much we have no no accent. The only one is that word. Mel and Pell and that, those kind of things. Other than that, um, we're pretty much it's we sound pretty much like everybody else. This is something that you can only buy in Idaho, though. These are yeah, this spud. What's that? Yeah, the, now, uh, uh, Miguel, do you know what um, spuds mean? No. No. Okay. It's and spud. Do you, Do you know what? Um, I uh, guess that this Idaho's could be something. With chocolate or coconut, or uh -huh, it is, but a spud uh, a spud. actually a spud. Let's see, let's see what what comes a up. A spud is actually known as a potato. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that that is a uh, what a spud means, and we have Idaho spud. Potatoes. Yeah, we are Idaho is known for worldwide. Yeah. 
potatoes. We have a lot of potatoes. And we have a candy bar that is only made in Idaho called the Idaho Spud Bar. Okay. And and it's it, in the middle middle of it is marshmallow and then you have chocolate on the outside and then coconut. So so in it's a inside is it's is potato. No, no, no. It's chocolate. <laughs> It's I marshmallow, should... but uh -huh. it looks like an it looks like a potato, but it's a uh -huh. chocolate, it's a chocolate bar that looks like a potato. So you know that you know that in in France there is a chain of restaurants called Patatterie, and all the things that you can eat there are made with potatoes. Uh, that that, yeah, that would be plants. something that would go very well in Idaho because we are very much a potato <laughs> potato, yeah. potato state. So, um, but we also uh, Mikhail is from the Basque country of Russia. Of sorry, Russia, <laughs> Spain. Basque country of Spain, and but we have, we have a good, lot of we have a huge Basque community in in Idaho. And so. we have good, good potatoes too in one part of the. On the Basque country. Really? I wonder if yes. that's why that's why so many Basques people settled in Idaho. Uh, <laughs> Could uh, be. Holly, can I ask, uh, like, uh, what what is the uh, average salary like in Idaho for, for example, for secretaries like uh, like driver, like uh, like common professions, like very very. Uh, what do you mean, uh, a sales uh, person in a uh -huh. store? Something like a very average. Was like. Okay, let's let's Google Idaho and I'll, and. Don't you know what the salary? I don't know. I don't know Why? the average salary is. Why? Um, oh, I don't know. I just I That's I weird. don't know. Then um, you don't live in Idaho. I do. I live in Idaho, <laughs> but I, as as far as average salary, I don't know. Um. Oh, I can't see. This is the temperature. <laughs> so. No, no, no. And this waterfall that appears there, it was an, an image so in a waterfall. It's a uh, waterfall. Yeah. They have the capital the, city right here. Boise. This is oh. Boise. Looks like so Canada. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are, are close to Canada. Trees? What I mean, trees, the trees. This is Lake Coeur d'Alene. This is in northern, and it's just this is just a few hours south of Canada, and this is Redfish Lake. Redfish Lake. Um, I haven't been here since I was a little girl, and but it's a really beautiful area of of Idaho. This is this is let's see. So English, German, Mexican, I guess is, is the area. Um, this is the capital city area, and I think I live. I don't actually know what kind, what which, which. Um, so you are German. Which county I'm in? No, uh, my family is English. No, um, but uh, you see, uh, there is written largest self-reported uh, ancestry. So yeah, uh, I, 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 must, I must live in the German. I don't know. <laughs> I don't actually know which which one of the counties here is is where I live. Um, <laughs> so I, I really don't. Um, let's see. Population square mile. So I probably live up in this county right here, but I'm not sure. I, I just moved there two month, two weeks ago. So, and this is um, Mormon Temple, wheat harvest. Let's see. And these are the interstates. This is this is a, a common view. Uh, from the other side, you see the train station on the bill on the hill in Idaho. Uh, okay, this is what, see. I live in see Jim County, Payette, Washington, Adam. This is the county I live in right here. I live in Valley County, but I'm not sure exactly where. <laughs> probably about let's see, Jim. I probably live about right there. And I just moved there from here. I used to live right there, and I just moved up to about right, somewhere about right there. And yeah, and this is Coeur d'Alene. That's up in the northern part of Idaho, and this is down in the southwest. And this is in the north. And City of Rocks. I'm not sure where that is. 
This is a Craters of the Moon. This is an area of Idaho that has, uh, it looks like Craters of the Moon, and uh, apparently the astronauts used to uh, train here. And then Bear Lake. And I don't know why that's, I don't know why these are here. <laughs> so, And then this is a very famous football field. Uh, it's one of the few football fields in, in the United States that has a color other than green. And they they made this a blue, and after that the f the football uh, association apparently stopped it. And this this uh, this team everybody loves BSU Broncos. And if you live in Boise, and you're not a Bronco fan, people wonder what what's wrong with you. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, as far as the average salary for temp uh, for I'm not sure Matthew. Um, I would say. In your city, in your city, where you live, or uh, where you lived. Home. I live in a town of 900 people, and I just moved there two weeks ago. But where you lived, like? Where I lived, um, I don't know. That oh, was 850 okay. people. <laughs> no, because why? Why I ask? Because uh, what I know about the United States that there are like more expensive states like California, like New oh, York, okay. and there are less, m more, much uh, more or less cheaper expensive. States. Yeah, cheaper. Yeah. So basically, it's Idaho, Vermont, this kind of country, um, uh, country side states. I think that's. I think it's the middle of the road. It's not because because we've got. We like. I live in a close to a real uh, tourist town where everything's very expensive. Um, I would say that um, that we are not um, a really. We're not as bad as some of the states, uh, but some areas we are down at the bottom, and some some areas we aren't. As far as the average salary. Um, Probably middle of the road. I'm thinking that the average um, office worker makes between eight and twelve dollars an hour. Okay. I'm thinking, but I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, the average. Uh, I know more about yearly wage. Uh, so I think in the county that I used to live in, the average um, yearly salary was thirty-five thousand a year, which is very low. Um, where the county I live in now, or the city, I think when I was reading it was like the average average yearly salary was about forty five thousand a year. Um, so it's it's not super high, um, but it's it's not so cheap either. For example, uh, Matthew, in in the nineties, no, in in the early two thousands, my sister was living in rural Kansas, and she bought a two bedroom house. For eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand? Eight thousand dollars. Okay, so that's nothing. That's and then, really cheap. Yeah, very very cheap. And then she moved to Idaho. She moved back to Idaho to be close to family, and she bought a, a house of similar, similar for about twenty thousand. That's so still, as well. Still cheap. very cheap. Still very very yeah. cheap. But um, not and not as uh, cheap as Kansas was. Um, I don't know anymore if they could get they could she could get a house that cheap. So, <laughs> so her her and her husband just just sold their home. Uh, I think they're selling it for one hundred and ten thousand, and they've bought a house for forty two thousand or forty three thousand, something like that. So, a much um, much cheaper home. So much smaller too. So, um, all right. Hi, Ake. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. How are you? Excellent. Very good. Very good. So, so we were just talking about Idaho. Matthew wanted to know a little bit about it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so how about in Russia? Is it is there cheap areas and and expensive areas, Matthew? Sure. Uh, what is um, uh, so? What is not in the city center and in uh, other uh, cities, big cities? Like mm -hmm. uh, the country area, it's it's uh, much more cheaper, and it depends mm -hmm. on the region because, as you know, the Russia is very big. So, mm -hmm. okay. and location, like things like that, you know, location, the so how mm -hmm. is there like crime rate, things like that. So, mm -hmm. okay. And um, Miguel, how about in Spain? Is there 
Is Spain um, in the, the different regions? Are, are they different? How are they different in the different regions? Yes, it's very it's very di different. It's the, the for instance the, the south is more cheap and and I live in in the Basque country and in, in just my city San Sebastian speaking about the, the houses and flats and. Uh, is the, the the most expensive city on on Spain? You know that some years oh. ago, with with this crisis, the, uh -huh. the, the, I think that the the main problem was the, the the price of the of the houses, and mm -hmm. it's a big it's a big problem for young people because maybe you you are born in in, in our city in San Sebastian, but you can't live here because the, the prices of the the, the flats are very 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 special normal a very normal uh -huh. flat flat could be nowadays that are the, the the prices are cheaper than some years uh, uh -huh. before but a normal a normal flat could be 400,000 euros a normal flat a so normal flat. wow yeah. So Just it's a very flat, very, flat four hundred thousand euros. Wow. Yeah, but it is a normal flat, so it's it's wow. a it's a very very expensive city, especially the the houses. It's uh -huh. it was all, always when 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 a, when is when one article or sheets or speaking about houses, the prices of the houses always mm -hmm. San Sebastian appears in the, the in the top of the list. So. Oh wow. No. Yeah. Now I, I know that I have I've actually talked about moving to Spain uh, f uh, with my uh, with my sister and her husband and their family because they want their kids to uh, get into a situation where they are immersed immersed in the language and maybe they'll learn a little bit of Spanish. Mm -hmm. And we were talking somebody I was telling somebody about it and they said that we should go to. I think it's 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 like two hours away from Madrid. It's Villa. Oh, I can't remember. Mm. Um, uh, if 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 you want to, if you are interested in in learning Spanish, uh, go to go to the Basque country. It's not the best idea, but because you know dude, we have a different people here speak uh -huh. Spanish too, but we we have a. A different language to the Basque, and in other parts of Spain, it happens the same. Yeah, maybe going to Catalonia is the same because they have they have another language and. Uh huh. Yeah. So Barcelona that, would be out of totally out yeah. of it. Yeah. So, but, but the place that we were we were that they suggested to us was was um, a city um, that's ne it's near Madrid. It's it, but it's uh, it's got like the the purest form of Spanish in all of Spain. The sorry, the, the? Uh, I can't remember the name of the city. Uh, Villa. Uh, wait, I, actually, I might be able to find it. But I don't, I don't understand the, the 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 sentence that you have said. The person. No. Um, Valladolid. Ah, Valladolid. Okay. Yeah. Valladolid. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, and I was told that they have the purest form of Spanish. Ah, maybe. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, yes, it's true. It's true. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and but I was looking at the real estate market, and it was like I was very surprised with how cheap things were there. <laughs> so I was uh, like, "Wow!" <laughs> yes, and it's a cheap, it's a cheap city too. Yeah. Is it? Is it a, an expensive? Yeah. City? All right. And how about in um, uh, Ake? How about in uh, Japan? Are right, what are the what are the differences between the different parts of of Japan? As far as um, prices and things like that. Uh, yeah, price. Yeah, relatively. If you uh, big city, uh, metropolitan area like Tokyo, mm -hmm. especially Tokyo is very expensive. And mm -hmm. uh, and Kyoto, yeah, the kind of sight sight place is very expensive. Price is very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, my stress is I I live in local area. Maybe it's not so expensive area. Mm -hmm. and, my strategy is I go to the shopping mall late at night. Usually, shopping mall you know, discount the price uh, for all their custom food. You know, f half price discount. Ah, oh, wow! So, because they have to sell such uh -huh. a fresh, such fresh item uh -huh. in the day, so the price down a lot. So I bought it. And okay. I, <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, that totally makes sense. So, so Japan is like, yeah, uh, like what Re Matthew described in Russia, with Russia. If you're living near the in the bigger cities, mm -hmm. it's very expensive. But when you go out to the smaller cities or the rural areas, it's less expensive. I think so, and yeah. uh, especially land price or kind of apartment fee is mm -hmm. much more. Uh huh. Oh yeah. I've and well, in um, buying a home, and I've learned that buying a home or renting a a flat in different countries have different uh, different processes and different ways of doing it too. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, uh, what we're gonna, what let's go ahead and get started on this uh, handout. And if you guys do not find the topic very interesting. I have no problem with changing it and going, and we'll go with the flow. So, um, not a problem at, at all. Um, so, all right. So, uh, the topic here is finding Mr. Right. <laughs> we can change that since you guys are all men. Finding Miss Right. <laughs> so, um, uh, so the the warm up here is: What are some good ways to meet a partner? So we have somebody uh, from the outside has written. Um, the most good ways to meet a partner is when you are traveling in an airplane or somewhere else, but, but especially for me the best way because I met my girlfriend when I was traveling to France and I fell in love with her at first sight. So um, so that's uh, Zerhoni's Zer um, way of how he met a, a partner. Um, do you guys have any suggestions or do you want to change the topic? <laughs> so. Um, Matthew. Well, you can meet. Uh, w so basically, it's not about where, but it's about what you meet. Uh huh. It's about <laughs> who not what who, who you meet. meet. <laughs> who you meet? Yeah, what you meet? <laughs> That's funny. So uh, okay, but you know uh -huh. when I, I speak, I, yeah, sometimes I realize that I speak incorrectly. But you know, I don't. Like uh, feel that uh, because English is my, is my second language, so uh -huh. yeah, it's well, okay for me to make mistakes. Yeah, well, that's true. The thing is, what what I, if people have to remember is accuracy. I, I'm I'm of the camp, or I'm of the belief that um, accuracy is not as important as fluency and being able to be understood, um, because native speakers of English make mistakes all the time. The difference is we're fluent and we're confident and so people don't hear it. And when when a non-native speaker starts speaking, if they don't point out that they're making that they're like, oh forgive my bad English or something like that, um, and just start speaking, most native speakers are not gonna hear the mistakes either. <laughs> so, okay. so 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 remember that. Um, uh, what what do you guys think? Do you think that uh, uh, that is true, or do you think it's really important to be accurate when you're speaking English? Accurate. Accurate. Uh, well, uh, what I think is uh, you should speak. Uh, firstly, is the most important. You should speak with uh, intonation. So if you stress the words, if you like slow down your speech, if you uh, mm -hmm. speak so. Uh, you should speak with uh, some intonation, not just mm -hmm. like uh, uh, not just like flat. Uh, mm -hmm. How would you say flat speech or? Yeah, monotone. Monotone, yes, yeah, speech. Um, mm -hmm. That's the most important. And about mistakes, you should try to use uh, more like uh, words. So uh, what mm -hmm. I mean, not just basic words, but some fancy words, idiom, idioms, and you know. Uh, I've spoken with many uh, American, like f from the the UK people, mm -hmm. and they understood me perfectly. Mm -hmm. They didn't say like uh, like oh I don't understand. They understood me perfectly, and mm -hmm. actually uh, I was like trying to uh, fake the time from the United States, and they kind of believed believed me. For yeah, also they, they they pretended like you pretended like you're an American and they believed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So yeah, Americans. Um, 
Uh, Non-Americans, like, the only people that really, frankly, should ever point out mistakes that you make in English are your very good friends, um, like your spouse or whoever, and then your teachers. <laughs> so otherwise, um, otherwise, you should just go out and be successful in speaking. So, um, Mikkel, how about you? What do you think is more important when you're speaking English? Is uh, accuracy or fluency? Mm, I think that it's different. Mm. Depend depends on the on the context or depends on the on the place that you are speaking. Uh, because, for instance, if you are speaking on in front of the public, how, how do you say this? On on public or in pu in public? Uh, you, or? You're speaking in public, yeah. In public, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that you have to be very very right. <laughs> you okay, just, you need to be uh, accurate. But, but, yeah, very accurate, but. For me now, with my level, uh, my basic level, I, my, my, my goal is to try to understand and try to be able to to express the, the, the ideas that I want to say. It's more uh -huh. so. It's my my only goal no, to, to, today. But maybe uh -huh. one day, I don't know if I will be, be able to 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 express in a better way the, the, this idea. No, so. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I, I totally understand. So and um okay, what do you think? What what is more important, accuracy or fluency? Uh it's up to the matter, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I am a translator. I, I have to, accuracy is very important. Oh yes. I saw mm -hmm. the news conference about very uh, sensitive issue. Uh mm -hmm. and uh, Translation is is almost opposite what the that English speaker said. So really? one I noticed, and he asked more about that, and translator translate more more <laughs> accurate translation after that. So yeah, it's a but, uh, usually speaking, maybe uh, I pre prefer in you know my goal is a kind of. Uh, communicative English. If I can mm -hmm. communicate somebody without uh -huh. understanding, it's okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of my view as well. As long as as long as people can communicate, I, I rem remember one time I had a student um, come into my class and um, I asked him uh, what, what you know I was going to be teaching him for about 15 weeks once a week, and I, so I said to him, okay, so what are one of your learning goals? And he said, well, I want to raise my level. And I said, I said to him, okay, do you want to raise your level or do you want to sound confident when you're speaking to your clients on the phone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he, oh, he, said, he, of course, said, I want to sound confident when I'm speaking to the clients on the phone. And I said, okay. So I think that that's what we should concentrate on because the level really doesn't mean all that much as, as it does as your ability to communicate and use the language. Um, and and he agreed, and we it was a good, a good class for him. And I he pro I think he probably did increase his level, but we, but he he agreed with me that that should not be the concentration to increase the level. You know, it's different if you're actually, uh, your you know your goal is to go to um, university in the UK or Australia, and you need to take the TOEFL or the IELTS, and you need to pass the test. That's a whole different thing. But if you're just really uh, needing it for your job or something like that, you should really concentrate on using the English, using the language instead of increasing your your level, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But it was it was fun teaching that guy. Don't remember his name <laughs> or anything. Good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was kind of like I, I just looked at him. I said, "Which do you really want to concentrate on that, or would would you rather you know the other?" So, um, all right. Well, that's a that's a good topic. I I absolutely love that topic, Matthew. <laughs> Much better than dating. <laughs> so, but anyway, do we want to continue to dating, or do we want to think of another topic? Dating, dating. You want to do this one? Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so what are some good ways to meet a partner? I, I, I don't, I'm not married, you guys. Give me some good ways. So, Mikael, what are some good ways to meet a partner? I'm not very origin, original in this, in this <laughs> topic <laughs> because no, because my wife and, and me, we, we met together in, on the high school. 
Okay, so yeah, at when, school. When we, at school, yeah, when we were 14. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, so. you're, you're, the, you're the second or third person I've met from Spain that married their high school sweetheart, and they're still married. <laughs> so. uh, no, no, but we, we, we meet together, but I uh -huh. passed some, some years asking her to be my partner, but no, he, oh, sorry, she always said no and no and no, but more or less 10 years uh, after we, we met, uh, uh -huh. we started to go in, we started to be in a couple, yeah. Uh-huh, started to go out. Um, yeah, to go out, yeah. That reminds me of the movie When Harry Met Sally. Do you remember uh, that yeah. movie? Yes, yes. You know, you know the first uh, few years, they, she couldn't stand him, and then finally they became friends, and then they fell in love. <laughs> so, um, All right, Rashid, nice to see you. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Thank you. Good. Very good. Good morning. Now, re remind me what country you're from. It's, um, I want to say... From the Netherlands. Netherlands. Oh yes. yes from the Netherlands. Oh yeah. Okay, but you're originally from uh, somewhere in the your your family is from somewhere in the uh, like, was it Syria? No, it's uh, from Morocco. Morocco. Okay, yeah, but yeah. you've lived you've lived your entire life in in the Netherlands. Yes. Yes, it's been yeah. what four months maybe since I've seen you. I think yes, I think so. But, uh, it's, uh, yes. Yeah. It's so uh, it's like that. Yes, it's a complication and that kind of. Uh... Yeah, and and well, and I I took some uh, I took some time uh, where where I was working on a project in in June, and so I wasn't around at all. And then in, mm -hmm. in the spring, I wasn't teaching at this time because of my also my schedule. And so so yeah, so it's been a while. <laughs> so, yeah, so I recognize you right away. I just could not remember. Okay what country you were from. So uh, so tell me, Rashid, um, what are some good ways to meet a partner? A good way to meet a partner? Yeah. Um, How did you meet your wife? <laughs> so. How did I meet my wife? Uh, I meet my wife at, uh, at the university. Okay. School? Okay, so we've got that there. School, yes. It's also school. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, it's, it's a while ago, I think. <laughs> Okay. I don't know exactly what uh, what was happened then. I don't know. I think uh -huh. uh, it was not uh, love on the first sight. It, it wasn't what? No, it was not love on the first sight. It was not love at first time. sight. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. And um, okay. What do you think? What are some good ways to meet a partner? Partner, I'm not sure. Some people meet their cop, uh, partner in a company. The company or uh -huh. work or uh, yeah or uh, somewhere else. <laughs> okay. So, I don't so. know. So, yeah. but by the way, I have a question. Uh huh. My friend said Mr. Wright is a word, but uh, Mrs. Wright is not, uh, or Miss Wright is not, uh, Miss Wright is not a word in English. Is it true? I haven't heard that. Mr. Right, only the Mr. Right is a word. Oh, that might be officially, but I've heard people, I've heard, I've heard guys say I'm looking for my Miss Right. Okay. I, I mean, I've, I personally have heard it, whether whether it's official in in the you know the different dictionaries and things like that. That I can't tell you, but uh, yeah, but I have I've actually heard people talk about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so that that's news to me, but. Um, you know, is your friend American or British yeah. or? Uh, my Jap uh, Japanese friend who are talking uh, with America, that American said, "Mrs. Miss Wright is not a word." Really? Oh wow! No, I didn't, I've never heard that. So, but but it, it uh, like we were talking about earlier, there's different regions of the U.S. Um, Ha might have different ways of saying things. In fact, they are. There are different ways um, in, around the U.S. Um, yeah. So I know. Alive, so. Excuse me. A language is alive. It is yes, changing. exactly. Yeah. It's it's alive and changing, and and just because um, he, that that person hadn't heard it doesn't mean it's not true. For example, I remember one of my 
one of my colleagues in, in Finland uh, said, um, my bad one time. He said, um, my bad. And, and I was like, oh, I, that's a really bad English. And he's like, what? I hear it on TV all the time. And I felt so bad because I had never heard of it. So Matthew, you found Urban Dictionary? Let's see, Miss Wright, when you feel that the person is, do you spend the rest of Yeah. Do you use the Urban Dictionary that comes? I, I, I've used the Urban Dictionary before sometimes. I don't go to it a lot, but every once in a while I do. But you know, there are like some strange uh, definitions, like uh, mm -hmm. some funny ones, like uh, with some uh, swearing words, like uh -huh. some kind of <laughs> fun to read. Yep. I, I run into, uh, usually what I do is I do a word search when I'm not sure about uh, how a word is used or whatever. I, I actually just type the that actual word, like for example, miswrite. I would type it in the um, in the Google search bar, and then the um, the Urban Dictionary would come up. I don't actually go to the Urban Dictionary. What does Stephen Speak say, um, Rashid? Stephen Speaks. Six signs that she is Miss Mrs. Wright right here. She's Mrs. Wright. So I think it's used. <laughs> so, so, um, all right. Let's. Uh, that was, but that's a good question. Um, okay. Thank you, um, Matthew. What, what can you think of some good ways to meet a partner? Well, parks uh, in parks and in the um, stores. Okay. And uh, actually, I've met there. Like I, I am speaking from my experience. Uh -huh. so, uh, stores uh, at uh, like supermarkets, like things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, some uh, some uh, like uh, public, uh, not public, but uh, some like um, it's where you go to dance. What do you call that? Mm -hmm. So a dance a club. A dance. Yeah, uh, yeah, like clubs. Let's say like clubs, some uh, kind of night, club. night club. Night, yeah, night, night club. clubs. And uh, what else could be on the street? You know, you are mm -hmm. walking down the street and you just see a beautiful uh, woman, Mrs. Wright. Yeah. <laughs> you see her and you go, "Oh, I gotta talk to her." So yeah. I, I know just that. Unfortunately, uh, say, uh, "Oh, you know, you have a uh, awesome dress, but it's quite uh, big for you." To okay. You. Uh, I've I've heard that in some countries I've heard it specifically German Germany that uh, people meet each other while wa walking the dog and so in nightclubs uh, bars and pubs bars and pubs and you said also in the park in the park okay and um, my my brother found his wife online <laughs> so that's a, also another way to to meet somebody do you guys know anybody that has found their husbands or wives online Rashid no 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 okay no my friends are, are a little bit old so <laughs> when they are with friends I don't think that no no no, the, none of them did. Okay. Um, how about you, Miguel? Have you met anybody yeah. that's met online? Uh, at the beginning, I was thinking that no, but yeah, but no. I I, I know one couple that they, they are. Uh, there is a um, a forum here mm -hmm. to speak about the uh, about outdoors sports and mm -hmm. yeah. And they both uh, love uh, go to the mountains and and they are from different parts of Spain, but they they, they meet in this in this forum, so they, they they meet online. And now they they are they are a couple. So just ago they they were married, and yes, it's uh, I think that nowadays for me it's, it's quite strange, but I think that nowadays is an it's a common way to to. To, to meet, meet uh, to meet a partner, not to, to because one part of one important part of on our life is online. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's in that. and then but for me, I think that if you want to to meet a a good partner or, or, or this person to share the rest of your life, mm -hmm. it has to be a, a situation that you can at least you can speak. 
you need to speak to to to, to know the other person. You know? uh -huh. So for me, it's very very difficult to 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 know how is one person if you are a, at a nightclub or in a in a bar or in a pub because it's, mm -hmm. there are situations that there there is very very difficult to, to speak in a normal way. You know? mm -hmm. And to know that, that. And if you have a hobby or if mm -hmm. you like something special, I think that is a good idea to 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 meet a partner doing doing this this activity. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good. So clubs, um, uh, interests like well, uh, churches, uh, ch uh, s s similar interests. Yeah. 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 Uh, that would be one like uh, clubs or churches, um, clubs. Um, let's see, hobbies. Oh, hobbies. Hobbies. Yeah. Hobbies, religion, so forth. Um. Another another way uh, to to meet people online, uh, pe not online, but people are uh, introductions. Friends, I have a friend to meet, a friend that wants to meet you, or I have a friend that I think would be really great with you, you know. And uh, somebody introduces you to somebody else. Um, or uh, this, this, this sounds just strange here for us. It's very very strange. Really? <laughs> this, yes. <laughs> The blind date idea. Blind, blind date. This is something that for us only appears in the movies and but not in the real life. <laughs> really, my, that's how my parents met. Actually, um, my my brother, my dad's uh, sister, uh, decided that uh, he met. She met my mom, and she thought he he would be really good with my brother. She would be really good for my brother. And so so what my brother was in the my dad was in the military. And so um, when he came back on leave, um, uh, she introduced them, and and then then they started to correspond while he was in the military, and and then when he came back, he he proposed. So, um, but that's how they they met. So, um, and then my brother actually, uh, my sister, my sister got married, and my brother at the time was. 38 years old and he was still single and he thought to myself um, he thought to himself my my kid sister my baby sister got married and I'm still single I need to get it together so he's he went on to the, all these different dating sites online and he uh, spent about a year looking for the right person traveled around the US met the, all these different ladies and finally settled on one and they've been married for about seven or eight years now <laughs> So it, it does happen, but all right. What we're going to do is we're going to read and practice. Um, so, so, sorry, Holly. I, I now say I was remembered that you know these uh, tech talks, these um, videos. Uh -huh. I yeah. Uh, some days, some days ago, I was I I watched one one of these tech talks. Uh, uh -huh. It was a photographer. Uh -huh. uh, he did a a, a, a work. Uh, the topic was this: how people meet together, how people find their their couple, and uh, really? but, but yes, but but using photograph photographies to 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 explain the, this these different ways, no? and this, uh -huh. was, this it was this is what is interesting for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten talks is a great way to practice your listening, actually. Yes, yes. It's a very very good way because you have different I, pronunciations yeah. and. Yeah. And it's, for me, it's very useful to to have uh, subtitles in in English. Oh, do they have? Is that how it set set yeah. it up? Okay. Yeah, you can yeah. you can download download all the videos with sometimes uh, there are twenty different languages. Uh, uh -huh. so you can find, you can yeah. choose the, the 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 subtitles that you want and yeah. Uh -huh. Oh wow! Okay, I um I did a a, a lesson here in Verbling uh, with a, a with a TED Talk video, and it was, um it, you know, and with with these wor worksheet, and they were supposed to go together, and um I guess Google Hangouts did not like it because <laughs> I kept getting this uh, this notice: we will shut you down if you don't turn that off, if you don't start using your original material or something like that, and I'm like. I paid for the subscription to use this material, and I and now that now you're telling me I can't use it. What? So so because of that, I I've decided to only use the TED Talks 
material in the private lessons where they're not where it's not being videoed, you know, recorded live. <laughs> but um, but there there are some really good um, good ways to learn English that way. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and read the text. Uh, we are going to fill in the spaces. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the spaces after we finish reading. We do have four words, guarantees, estimated advertisements, and passport. If you get to one of these blanks, just go ahead, go ahead and say beep and go on and read, and then we will fill it in afterwards. Um, so Rashid, could you read the first paragraph? Uh, yes. Uh, Janet is a very satisfied customer. She was recently married to Mark, a 27 years old architect. She explains how they met. I was in my early 30s and fed up with being single. All my old school friends had tied me nuts, so I decided to join an online dating agency and it worked. Okay. Now, uh, could you say this word right here? Architect. Okay. Uh, are you saying the the ch with a k sound or a ch? Uh, uh, architect. Ar ch. All right. So it's a k. The k is like a k sound. So architect. Oh, architect. Okay. Yeah. Architect. architect. Yeah, it's one of the one of the words that have the ch be a, be a k instead of a sh. So, all right. Thank you. Um, are there any words in here that you guys do not know? Yes, this uh, and this sentence said, all my old school friends had tied the knot. Tied the knot. Okay, that right. is, that's, yeah, Matthew said that, right. So tied the knot is to get married. So so when get did married. you tie the knot, Miguel? Uh, eight, eight years ago. Eight years ago. Okay, so that yeah. you tied the knot eight years ago. Excellent. Um, so Rashid, when did you tie the knot? Um, I think ten years ago. Ten years ago, okay. Yeah, Matthew, yeah. have you, have you, Matthew, have you tied the knot? Yeah, forty years ago. Forty? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. You're not in your sixties. Why not? Because you just don't sound like it. <laughs> but it's okay. You can lie in my class. I'm fine. <laughs> It's because it's all it is is English class. So, so uh, okay. Have you tied the knot? No. No. Okay. I haven't either. I, but but back to the lying in the class. I was in a Finnish class once, and um, somebody was asking me questions, and I was telling her completely and totally ridiculous answers, and. Um, and because it was, as far as I was concerned, it's just practicing the language, so you don't have to really be honest. And that's how I feel. I, people don't have to answer the right question. Ake, Ake could have said, yeah, I got married 10 years ago, and nobody would know. And um, and, and my the Finnish teacher, was. she turned to me and she said, I thought you were an English teacher. And I said, I am, but I'm just practicing the language. And, and I, that's my feeling about it. Lie as much as you want. So, Matthew, did you really get married 40 years ago? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, let's. Any other words in this paragraph? Okay. So let's go on. Um. Um. Uh, Mikael, could you read the next sentence and uh, the next paragraph? Yeah. Sure. Janet is one of an increasing number of people who have used a mat, mat, matchmaking service in order to meet a life partner. This is not a new phenomenon, however. In the 19th century, single people would, would place uh, be in newspapers created specific, specifically for those looking for a partner. By the mid 20th century, dating agencies had become common. Okay. In the 21st century, online dating has become wildly popular, with thousands of sites offering the chance to meet Mr. or Ms. Mrs. Wright. Uh, Matthew, could you read the next paragraph? Uh, so, how can you achieve success with uh, online dating? Well, there are no industry. Maybe, Industry uh, veterans say that the most important thing is the profile photograph. Uh, 
You need to promote yourself. Far too many online photographs, photographs are less than flattering. It's important to remember to smile. This is not a beep application. Ask someone to take the photograph. A blurred selfish, no, selfie. <laughs> a blurred uh -huh. selfie is unlikely to do you any favors. You know, it was really funny when you read that. You, you read, this is not a bleep application. It sounded like you were um, bleeping out bad words, <laughs> guess words. <laughs> so, so it was good the way you the way you read it. So your pronunciation is very good, Matthew. So okay. Sorry, Holly. Blurred, blurred selfie. A blurred, a blurred selfie blurred. is blurred means you really can't see much. It's it's not clear. Okay. So it's un, an unclear picture. And a, pic okay. a selfie is a picture you've taken of yourself. So, yes, yes. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. And okay, can you read the the next paragraph? Uh, starting with so. Uh, starting with it. Okay. It is also important to be honest your profile with an almost ultimate number of potential partners online. It's not necessary to bend the truth in order to secure a date. There is nothing worse than doing on the first date, only to discover that potential partner had been less than honest online. Okay. All right. Thank you. And uh, for Janet, it took more than six months before she met Mark. I don't think I'd ever meet the right person. I didn't think I'd ever meet the right person, she s explains. However, the effort and costs paid off in the end with a wor worldwide online dating industry earning an, a blank $2 billion in 2013. It seems that there are millions of people willing to take the plunge and try a partner online. I, have a, I just have a little a cat that just joined me. Sorry about that. Uh, so um, are there any words or phrases in here that you guys do not know? Yes, take the plunge. Take the plunge. Okay, to take the plunge um, means to, um, to, to take the plunge means to jump in, um, to jump in and do it. Um, mm -hmm. Jump in is to start something. Yeah, to decide to do something or to start doing something and to do the, the, this step. To make yeah, the to step. Start, or, to, to, make, to make a first step at something. Okay. So, all right, yeah, to jump in and take the, take the first step is another, a better way of saying that. All right, any other words? Okay, so let's go ahead and match the, the words. Guarantees, estimated, advertisements, and passports. Um, with these words. So single people would place blank in newspapers created specifically for those looking for a partner. I so what would ad, good? So single people would place advertisements. Very good. Okay, and then number two. While there are no blank, in, industry veterans say that the most important thing is the profile photograph. So, any suggestions on number two? So guarantees, estimated, or passport. Any suggestions? Guarantees. 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 Very good. Guarantees. Okay. And um, it's important to remember to smile. This is not a blank application. Passport. 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 You know, it's it's really funny. Um, one of the, one of big difference between the U.S. and the rest of the world is we are allowed to smile on our passport pictures. <laughs> And um, uh, people were very surprised. I went and got my passport picture taken in, in Finland, and um, <laughs> and I told the lady, and she goes, are you sure? And I said, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> so I showed her where it said we could smile, and she was really surprised. So, um, okay, next one, earning on what? Estimate. Estimated. 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 Right. 
$2 billion. Okay. All right. Now let's go on. Uh, we're going to skip some vocabulary. We kind of had some free talking here. So um, discussion. Do you... Um, Oh, okay, we can't do that one. Um, next one. Um, okay, do you think that a, using an online dating, dating agency is a good idea? Probably it works for some people, but it doesn't work for some people. And mm -hmm. it, uh, kind of, uh, such kind of agency requires sometimes very high price, so mm -hmm. yeah, probably that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've I've tried it. Doesn't work for me, but it worked great for my brother. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, a good friend of mine got married a few years ago, and she tried online dating three or four times, and it never worked. But she finally got married. So, Matthew, what are some good or bad places to go on a first date? So, first of all, so what are some good places to go on a first date? And I know it's been like forty years since you dated, so. Yeah, so I would say that uh, good for a first date it would be, in my opinion, like uh, uh, a small cafe. A small cafe. Yeah, why not? Okay, excellent. Oh, so what are some bad places to go on a first date? Well, it depends, I think, on people. But I would never go, for example, to a film or to a, a movie. Okay. Yeah. To, to watch a movie. Yeah. So it depends on the person. Yeah. It depends on the person. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Miguel, is marriage becoming more or less less important in your country? I can uh, see any big difference speaking of marriage. I think that is something more or less the same. It's more or less the same. Yeah. Maybe at now nowadays we have different kind of Marriage, no, because we can mm -hmm. be a couple, an official couple, with without, mm -hmm. um, without a um, typical marriage. But mm -hmm. you can be, you can be a a couple, no, a legal, mm -hmm. a legal, a legal couple, no. Yeah, that's called in in the, in the states at least. I don't know about the UK. It, uh, in the states, it's called a common law marriage. And that's when a couple lives together, and after a certain amount of time, they can actually um, be considered a common law. And you have people that might be, um, they've been together for 20, 30 years, and, they, that, and that's what they are, is a common law marriage. They've never gone through the marriage ceremony, for example. But what about uh, domestic partnership? What's the difference um, uh, between domestic common partnership, law? Uh, that might be British English. <laughs> so. Domestic partnership? Yeah, well, domestic partnership, is that between two people the same uh, no. gender? No, not necessarily. It's uh, So, okay, what I know that domestic partnership is what you told, that you don't get married, but you live with mm -hmm. that person, uh, like you live, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. But common but, law marriage, as far as I know, is when you... Uh, do not get officially married. Like uh, with, uh, you don't sign papers, like documents in uh, mm -hmm. uh, with the government. Yeah, but you go to the church to some kind of uh, religious <laughs> procedure. Mm -hmm. Like no, 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 no. That's the common law marriage. No, no, no that's not the common law. Common but if law you look marriage. on Wikipedia, that is written there. If really? You look on the, yeah. That's not. That's not that's how I learned it. Um, well. Uh, I always uh, I was I was taught as a child that a common law marriage is when a person lives together uh, for um, for a certain amount of time and then the, then the courts will see it as a marriage. Okay, so a domestic partnership right here, according to this, a domestic partnership is an interpersonal relationship between two individuals who live together. And share uh, share a common domestic life, but are not married to each other or to anyone else. You see, that's not like you said. Uh, no, that is not the same. Something. No, that's not. <laughs> but that's not the same as um, a common law marriage. A common law marriage is when two people live together, and the only the only the only difference is between uh, in their marriage or in, in this situation. Is they they have not gotten illegally married in the church or or in the courts. 
but but besides that, everything else is the same. Okay, uh, there is like um, uh, Rashid put the link of the common law marriage, so you can see that there is like some explanation about that. I know it's confusing, like for some people, but that's what I learned. Yeah. See, this is basically what I was taught. It's, it's uh, basically a common law marriage, also known as something marriage. Uh, informal marriage or marriage by habit and re repute is a legal framework in a limited number of jurisdictions where a couple is legally considered married without that couple having formally registered their relation as a civil or religious marriage. And plus, uh, I, I, how can I say, as much as you say, domestic something, domestic marriage? Domestic partnership. New system, you know, uh, many people, especially in France, maybe 60% couple uh, use this system, not mm -hmm. uh, system. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is this is actually the same thing in, in this um, Wikipedia is exactly what I was explaining. Marriage by habit. It's a, in a limited number of jurisdictions where a couple is legally considered marriage, married without the couple having re registered their relation as a civil or religious marriage. Um, it's, it's been considered valid by both partners, but not, has not been formally recorded with a state or religious registry or celebrated in a formal religious service. In effect, the act of the couple representing themselves to others as being married and organi organizing their relation as if they were married acts as the, the evidence that they are married. So that's um, that's basically what I was trying to explain, but maybe I maybe I was misunderstood. <laughs> so no, oh. no, no, I I was uh, mistaken. So oh, okay, no worries. Uh, so it's it's for me it's, it looks kind of the same as domestic partnership, but what's the difference between domestic partnership and um, it, it's from, from what I read, a domestic partnership ship could be two roommates living together. Two mates? Two roommates. Oh, two roommates. Yeah. And so. sometimes it has a kind of some law background uh, agreement. Not, uh, you know, two people's agreement. Sometimes, uh, you know, law, they enforce yeah. that. That's a domestic partnership. But uh, it's larger uh, you know, obligations yeah. laws. So uh, I, in, uh, traditional yeah. Marriage. Yeah. I need to get to the next class. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you guys so very much for your participation. We'll see okay. you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.